And welcome everyone to the Charlie Mike training series hosted by the National Veteran Small Business Coalition. I'm Zach Armstrong, Deputy Executive Director with NVSBC, and I'll be your host and MC for today's training. Uh, before I introduce our speakers, I'd like to share just a few announcements and updates with you. We are proud to have BAE Systems as the sponsor of our 2024 Charlie Mike training series. Um, BAE Systems is incredibly active in the government contracting community, and their generosity and their presence at events and conferences is noticeable. So I highly encourage you to go say hi to the BAE Systems team at those events and uh, learn about their opportunities and resources for you and your team. With that, you know, for those of you who are finding NVSBC for your first time, still learning a little bit about what we're about, um, we're here to connect GovCon professionals uh, of all different sizes um, to develop their knowledge base and skills like we're talking about today uh, through our training programs, connecting them to other professionals and opportunities through our engagement activities, and also to promote policies and acquisition strategies through our advocacy uh, arm. So our coalitions made up of service disabled and better known small businesses, federal agencies, service providers that support small businesses and the large primes. Uh, so check out our programs and events. Uh, we have tens of thousands of professionals and activities uh, through our 15 programs and services. So there's likely a program that's tailored to you and your staff's needs. In terms of membership, um, you know, we do what we do. Uh, we provide lots of value in terms of uh, groundbreaking advocacy uh, activities, you know, real money, real opportunities for the SDVOSB space. We had more than 10 billion more dollars are eligible in 2024 because of some of the advocacy activities that we're responsible for, moving some of the set aside for SDVOSBs from three to 5%. But so much more than that, consultations, matchmaking activities, engagement events, training programs, uh, so much for $350. So if you have questions, our team, Janelle Askew, our director of engagements, ready to answer your questions and get you connected to great folks like our speakers today. Uh, lastly, our engagement activities. You know, we're in 10 markets across the country. These are dinners, lunches, and breakfasts where we have tremendous speakers, good training, good access to the right people. You know, if you or your staff are in these markets, we encourage you to take advantage, find teaming partners, learn about opportunities, and more. I'll add one more. And lastly, our, our conference, uh, a lot of times which we're best known for, um, many reasons to attend this, we'll have roughly 2,000 in attendance. Uh, network with 150 plus agency leaders from 20 plus agencies. You know, this is matchmaking, insights on the current state of government contracting, the challenges and insights. There's training. We have a, a exhibit hall that's 10,000 square feet with 150 vendors. So register today. Uh, we sold out last year, so get in while you still can and be part of that conversation because we're talking about your business. This is May 20th through 23rd, and uh, we look forward to seeing your, you and your team there. So with that, you know, I'm Zach Armstrong again, get to be your moderator and uh, I'm able to guest host our, our director of training, Marie Mishker, often runs these. And as we continue to divide and conquer, I got a chance to propose something with two good friends uh, who I get to introduce today. Uh, so Irene Glazer, uh, retired Army Colonel, CEO of Spar Solutions Group, um, along with uh, another friend, John Manolius, Vice President, uh, strategic relationships with Penn Bay Technology. Uh, this group is just, uh, this is a rock star team. And, uh, you know, it's a privilege to get to know both of you throughout the years now. And, uh, you know, I just want to say thank you both for investing some time today and uh, to share your knowledge, your wisdom, your insights, uh, really around what we're calling informally how to work a room. You know, we have these engagement activities all the time. Um, you know, whether you're searching for a government contract, trying to get your next one, trying to like meet the right person, I think you both have a lot to share. Uh, so with that, you know, I'd like to ask each of you just for a minute, a little bit of intro about yourself, nothing too substantial. And then I'll start to tee up some questions for both of you. So I would like to start with Irene. 
Um, if you could, just a little bit about yourself and you know why you're here, why this is important to you. Well, Zach, I am so um, thrilled to be here today, especially with my good friend, John. And for the topic of networking, I'm just thrilled that it is John because of the networks I made through the NVSBC. He and Penn Bay are one of the first ones I made, and it's been very lasting, and I'm very appreciative, and we've become not just networking colleagues, but really good friends, so it's exciting to be here, and NVSBC is the reason that my business is in a growth curve. I'm so excited about that, and growth curves are a result of forming relationships and uh, seeking help from the experts. So it's great to be here. As you said, I'm retired Army, and that's shaped who I am today. So um, it's it's all about the veterans in this community. Love it. John, you, great. your turn. No, thank you, Irene. Uh, it, I appreciate the kind words. You know, we've, uh, here at Pembe, we you know, since Irene started here at, at the NVSBC and, and getting involved, we have been become very good friends. We actually meet uh, every two weeks. We hop on a call and, and we're speaking with Spar on a regular basis. And ironically, uh, the vast majority of the conversations end up being more friendly rather than <laughs> business related. So, uh, you know, it's it's a very positive engagement and it, it's nice to work with with people that you like. Um, that's probably the most important thing. I can't say enough good things about the NVSBC. I've been coming to events since almost the beginning, uh, since mm -hmm. they've had the DC networking dinners. And uh, I will say that uh, it's it has probably been the most influential uh, organization for not only Penn Bay, but uh, you know, previous company that I've worked for, uh, RBCI as well. Uh, you know, Rob Betters is, is also a board member and actively involved. And, you know, it's just such a good organization that we we will continue uh, to to participate. We'll, of course, go to the monthly dinners. Um, you know, I've been doing BD uh, uh, relationship management for over 25 years. So uh, if you're looking for for a good networking opportunity, this is the one. If you have to pick just one, this is the one to choose. But thank you, Perfect. Zach. Thank you. Andrew. Yeah, you're welcome. So to get this going, you know, I think uh, just to share with the team, uh, I believe or everybody here, I believe you two are quite modest, but also incredibly skilled at this. Uh, so I get a chance to kind of tease it out of you and try, try to, you know, find your best practices, your tips and tricks, a little bit of the storytelling. Uh, so Irene, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you know, one of the common questions NBSBC fields has to do with, you know, how do I take advantage of these networking or engagement activities that you guys, you know, what, what we always say is we're trying to create the conditions for GovCon, GovCon successes. You know, with that, we know people still have to do the work. Like NBSBC can't do it for them. I can't get you on a contract. I might be able to get you in the right room with the right people, but you got to do it yourself. Uh, so, Talking about that, one of the things we find is people want to jump in and talk capabilities right away. And I know you had experience on both sides of that. There, there's a good balance that needs to be reached. So I'd love for you to kind of jump in and share a little bit of your perspective. So you were referring to all of the dozens, if not hundreds, and I'm sure it's hundreds of networking events that NBSBC offers. The first thing that um, you need to do when you're entering into one of these environments is assess it. Is this a one hour reception with a limited amount of time to get the most bang for your buck in the networking arena? Or is it a three day conference where you can kind of spread things out, circle back to people you didn't get a chance to talk to or not? But in the end, it's all about how you communicate and communication. And it's said over and over again, probably too much is a two way street. So when I when I speak with people and I, by the way, John, and I both love these kinds of events because we just like people and having fun. It might be harder for some of us than it is for others. But the main thing is, what kind of impression do you make? Um, you only get one first one. So if I've met you and you tell me your name and I tell you mine and then you say, this is what I'd like to sell to you or I am. I am this particular product or service, and here's what I can do for you. I'm probably going to walk away and not even get your name because you've made that error of not 
building on the relationship before we get to shop. You talk shop before we get to know you. And that's that's the biggest thing I rely on is, is building the relationship first. John, what do you have to say about it? Yeah, I mean, I, I could not have said it any better than Irene just said it. Um, you know, this is still a relationship business. Uh, a lot of people want to spend so much time talking capabilities and pulling out capability statements and, you know, moving on to the next person and and trying that, that uh, you know, that kind of casting a wide net, if you will, of getting your capabilities out there. And, you know, the, the, the reality is this, is this is still a relationship business. People only do business with people they like and they trust. OK, and I think it's very important for you to establish a relationship with someone, get to know them. You know, there's low hanging fruit there. Um, you know, uh, typically when you're going to an event, uh, folks might be coming from out of town. Maybe they're coming from different backgrounds and asking them, you know, where they've come from, what with VOSB events, it's very easy, right? Where did you, did you serve? If so, what branch, right? So these are all questions that can come up and I'll give you an example. I'm from the D.C. metro area. I'm born and raised here. I went to school here. Um, you know, I'm a I'm University of Maryland graduate. Uh, I know a lot of folks in the area. And more often than not, if an, there's another person from the D.C. area, I typically can make a connection with them. We know some mutual, um, you know, uh, POCs somewhere or contacts that we're able to talk about. And uh, I'll tell you, a lot of times people will do their homework. They'll go back and they ask these folks that maybe, you know, what do you think of this person? You know, I saw John Manolius. And if they say, hey, John Manolius is uh, not the greatest guy on earth, then that could have an adverse impact on my business. So the community is so small, but Irene's 100% correct. To uh, make that connection first, that's going to be the more memorable experience for them. Perfect. You know, one of the questions, like another one level, high level, before we get back into some of the tips and tips and uh, tips and tricks, best practices from both of you. But, you know, before this, the three of us had a conversation about some people could look at this through a lens of networking or how to work a room it has to do with like extroversion versus introversion. Some people may say like, no matter what, you have to put in some effort around it. Uh, so, you know, there's a human on the other side. John, I think you're like very equipped to talk about this, but I want to hear from Irene too. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about how that plays a role with, you know, your preparation and what to do when you're actively in that moment. So everyone comes from a different background, a different culture, and everyone communicates in their own way. And some people can feel intimidated by, by the extroverts that just seem to be having a wonderful time in the room and wonder for themselves, how do I approach this? I think it's really important to break it down into little bite-sized chunks and realize that at the very beginning, if you walk out of a networking event with one good connection, you've served a good purpose. You need to set goals for yourself and, and uh, be realistic about them when you're first starting out. And the second thing I'll say about introverts versus extroverts is I learned when I was in the Army that Army senior leaders um, are tested out at, at half because we do personality tests um, in order to assume command or that sort of thing, but half of them are introverts. And I learned that that does not mean that it is more difficult for you to communicate. It just means that you recharge your batteries when you're by yourself. So introvert versus extrovert is how you recharge your batteries. Um, and so I personally, I look for the introverts because they're the ones that aren't doing all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. John, what, I mean, we talked about some of the 80-20 rule on some of this. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. What's your comment on, you know, what Irene was sharing there? Yeah. So, so uh, you know, I think part of attending an event is is the preparation, right? And if you know that, especially with an NBSBC event, a lot of the folks that attend an NBSBC event are coming via referrals. Or maybe I may have said, hey, you should really attend this event. And I might be the only person they know. We'll leverage that relationship so they can make introductions for you, you know, and make those warm introductions. Because, look, I admit it's, it's very awkward just walking up to someone at an event just cold, turkey and you know just trying to open a conversation with something it can it can be a little awkward but um 
I encourage you to ask those open-ended questions when you are talking to people. Okay, why are you going to ask open-ended questions? Because you're trying to to get elicit a a more uh, broad response and maybe more in-depth response as well by asking an open-ended question. You know, if you if you ask yes or no questions, it's going to be kind of like an interrogation, and that's not the point behind it. But I spend a lot of time trying to listen to maybe someone new at an event, you know, try to find out more about them. Rarely will you have, will you catch me talking capabilities? It's so easy to say, uh, you know, I'm John Manolius. I work with Pembe Technology Group and we are an SDV OSB and we go through this laundry list of capabilities um, and everyone's eyes just glaze over. They, they don't, they don't, they're not, they're hearing the same spiel over and over again. I get the elevator pitch and I think there's an appropriate time and place for everything. But um, I try to ask questions that are going to provide more engagement from a personal level uh, to understand that. Uh, I actually have a funny story about that. We have, um, rel- or we have a, a couple folks at Pembe that we're going to be working on our booth the first year that we had done a booth uh, at the NVSB um, at the vets 20. It was one of the vets events. And, you know, before we were preparing for the event, they came to me and said, look, I'm a little nervous. You know, I don't really know Pembe, you know, Pembe, what if someone comes and asks me a question? And I said, listen, um, you know, just look at it as more of a, 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 a social event and, you know, capabilities will come. You know, you're able to hand if they ask for a capability statement, you can handle out, hand it out. But it doesn't have to be a, an uncomfortable situation. It can be a social event. And I think that's going to be a much more powerful, uh, 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 you know, interaction, if you will. Uh, and again, let them do the majority of the talking, ask the open ended questions, learn more about what they're doing, and then you're able to speak as well as a result. I love it. So it kind of transitions quite well to Irene. You were sharing a little bit of a story. I'd love for you to share it again. But, you know, talk about like cues and validation and listening and how sometimes when you're treated, you know, there's another human on the end of this interaction, what that's like and how to how to be thinking about that and how to prepare for it. Well, Zach, I'm (laughs) laughing because some of us might be a little more sensitive, but some of us are more accustomed to being overlooked in a room, depending on the industry in which we serve. So I got a little bit of background in this and being in the military police corps when there were almost no women in the beginning. Yeah. So if somebody treats me like I don't exist, I can pick up on that pretty quickly because I don't like to feel that way, but more importantly, I don't wanna make you feel that way. And in the end, it isn't how I feel, it's how I make you feel. And that's the essence of good communications. And the story I refer to happened way too recently where I went to an industry day and saw a key person that I needed to talk to and that I have an existing work relationship with. And I am a little vertically challenged So the gentleman was able to just look over my head for an important, more important person than me to speak with and ignore me. (laughs) And it went a long way in, for one, making me want to try harder, but not with that person. And number two, just realizing that maybe I don't want to do business in that area again. And I'll finish up with this and you're going to laugh, but there's so much said about elevator pitches and I can promise you after two years, I really don't have one because it's you I care about more than selling my company. And it just turns out we're being really successful right now. And it's because of relationships we've met and we've met them at many, many of these MBSBC events. Yeah, I love it. John, I mean, again, the three of us, talked a couple times to prepare for this a little bit. You know, we've talked even, is it like, again, to take what Irene's that story is, maybe that person was trying to get out of that conversation and maybe they shouldn't have, like it cost Mm -hmm. that person maybe a relationship. But talk to me about your experience with managing these interactions, like setting boundaries, timeframes, like what's on your mind? What have you learned? Because clearly that was a poor example, right? Like, or a great example that Irene gave, but that cost that person a little bit of a relationship. 
Yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's difficult a lot of times because, you know, we, we've all been involved in a conversation with essentially kind of a, a life sucker or a, or a time sucker, if you will, where they are just kind of monopolizing your time and talking about things that become really difficult. But I think it's important, um, especially at some of these events that you're attending, to set the stage for them that say, hey, you know, um, look, I don't mean to interrupt, but, you know, I'm expecting a phone call. Or I need to call someone. I need to to check in with someone or I need to meet with someone before I leave. So if I have to go, you know, just just establish that expectation a lot of times with folks um, early. Uh, if you don't have the time to dedicate to the conversation um, and and make your you know, make sure you're you you can leave yourself some outs because uh, unfortunately, you know, not unfortunate people are still learning the process, right? They're still understanding how to network a lot of times and they they maybe don't realize it. And I think they come in with a certain goal. You know, when I'm going to to an event, I, I do a lot of preparation. Um, you know, the first thing I do is I try to make sure that my appearance is right, right? You know, I make sure that, you know, when, uh, any suit that I have, for example, even if I buy it off a rack, I make sure I take it to a tailor. So I I, I look, accord, you know, the part, um, you know, you want to make sure with events these days, it's business casual versus versus um you know business right and i think a lot of those lines get blurred and you want to be prepared for that but coming into the event from a from a from a you know mental stage like what am what is my goal as irene mentioned earlier and i want to make sure that i'm establishing managing my time and that's part of managing your time yeah. is who you're talking to and establishing that boundary up front to say hey listen i i do have to go talk to this person so i i apologize for uh, you know, interrupting you here and we can catch up later, you know, grab their business card uh, and go from there. But the way to alleviate all of this is make the con the conversation has to be pleasant for both parties. Right. Yeah. And it has to be something that people want to speak to you. And I look forward to going to events. Um, you know, for me, that's the fun part of this job are the networking events and going to different types of events. A lot of people look at this as kind of like the I guess it's not that fun for them, but right. you gotta you gotta establish that mentality uh, up front. Can I just piggyback on John for a minute? I yes. think what we're alluding to also is body language. So yeah. really, when you go to um, a Charlie Mike, uh, no, I'm sorry, this is a Charlie Mike. When you go to one of the networking dinners, you have um, a little bit of networking time during the training, and then you have this wonderful social hour. And after that, you're seated at the table. So that social hour is a really important hour. And that's very different from the three-day conference where you don't have to say you have a call. You can say, look, um, I'll catch up with you later and kind of mean it, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. There's a lot of people at that event. With the shorter time frame, it's kind of important. Number one, are you there to this is your goal. Are you there to reconnect with people or are you there to meet specific people? So if reconnect is your goal, it's a lot more relaxed. I see so-and-so and we're already doing business together and we're going to talk about it. But if it's to meet people, you've got to be kind of focused. And that focusing means not allowing somebody, as John said, to be your oxygen vampire. They do not need to take up all your time because you don't have much time. So if you're listening to this and you can't read body cues like someone looking at their watch or their eyes darting back and forth or pulling the fire alarm, then you probably need to reassess your own self and check in with your own self. <laughs> I love it. An oxygen vampire. I have a new term that I'm going to use. Uh, OK, so to put a bow on this, Irene, I'll come back to you and we'll close with John before I you know, close up the session here, but whether it's things that shut conversations down or and or just a couple other tips or tricks you wanna like share your experiences, I'd love to for you to put some closing remarks on what else would you wanna impart on, on folks that are listening today? So if every sentence that you say starts with I, you're going to turn people off right away. And that's something I actually had to learn is that whenever I'm talking about myself and it has to do with the company, it's we. And so 
it's never about you. It's about your team. It's about the people that work for you. You would not be successful without them. So it's imp important that you do not make the conversation about yourself. And um, that's my number one tip. And the second is some people are drones. They want to get you in. Um, and I don't mean like the drones that fly around and take pictures of you when you're not paying attention, but I mean droning on and on. And um, John was referring to it as you're getting a glazed look, but don't occupy that person's time. If they move on, it is not personal and it's not about you. It's because they came there with their goals in mind. <laughs> I love it. John, any parting words or ideas? So look, stories? I, I've yeah. got a ton of tips and, and you know, <laughs> people are more than welcome to reach out to me. I mean, a, a, before they go going to events. In fact, I was just um, helping a, another uh, relatively new SDVOSB recently that um, had reached out via Scott Jensen uh, to to essentially help them, you know, talk to them a little bit about BD suggestions, things like that. But uh, I will say this, um, you know, come prepared to an event, um, know your audience, right? Make sure you understand what the what is going on at this event, right? Not just showing up, you know, maybe take a look at uh, pictures or videos from the previous years to see what to what they can expect going in there. Uh, that's a really important key. Uh, second, tip is as you're coming in don't sit there and focus too much on the event i mean I, I i like to listen to podcasts right i like to listen to music on my way in i take my you know i want to clear my mind a little bit so i can come in with that positive mind frame okay uh relationship management is simply a, a a transfer of enthusiasm that's all it is if you come in with a negative attitude or if you come in with a very um you know a, a pessimistic attitude then that is what's going to be conveyed in that event and irene will pick up on that <laughs> so don't, <laughs> don't 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 do that to, to you know don't talk to irene if you're having a bad day and we talked about that before zach you know everyone has a bad day and you know we're all humans and i think it impacts us different ways um and sometimes you're better off just punting and moving on and going you know and not going to the event if if you've really had a bad day and you're go not going to present well um and the third thing is look you know it, it, like the vets conference for example vets 24 it's going to be a, it's it's intended to be a fun event it's not intended to be a boring event it's intended to you for you to engage right it's not intended for you to just go there and be a machine and go from room to room and, you know, try to take everything in, you know, there's the whole point of that is engagement. Um, so be engaged. Okay. Um, there's, you know, I, I don't understand uh, sometimes people that walk around with these backpacks at events with their computers in there. Um, you know, one of, one of the biggest tips that I can give people is take a break during the day. If you're going to these events, go back to your room, decompress a little bit. A lot of these events are going, you know, when we're talking about a conference, you're going to evening events as well. So you're out from 8 a.m. to potentially midnight. OK, it's a long day. Take a few take breaks during the day. Go back to your room. Grab, you know, go go back to your room. Take a little break. You know, kick your shoes off. You know, do some emails back at your room. But, you know, just hanging out at the event just to hang out, just to be present, so to speak, isn't very effective. And it's not going to keep your head in the right place either. So uh, but I, I think the biggest tip that I have and Irene will definitely agree with me on this is is that mindset and that positive mindset. But you have to know yourself and how you're going to be in that positive mindset as well. Transfer Zach, of enthusiasm. That's what I just agree. Yeah, Irene. Yeah, Zach, some relationships, but I think a lot of them are like a tea bag. If you don't give the person a second chance at some point, your tea is going to be very weak. Let it yeah. percolate. You may not want or need to see that person for a year, but never burn bridges. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So, you know, with that, I'll put a, a close here. But on behalf of our board of directors, which Irene is also on our board of directors, <laughs> uh, on behalf of so our Penn staff, Bay. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, on behalf of our members of the coalition, of which Penn Bay and Spar Solutions are both, uh, I do want to say and share, you know, thank you to both of you for investing and sharing some of your stories, your anecdotes, 
hopefully this gets some newer GovCons and even some seasoned GovCons other ideas to think about and to maximize like how you work a room, how do you network? So thank you both. I also want to thank our sponsor, BAE Systems. Uh, to everyone watching, if you have any questions, I think all three of us are available, but you can also send a note to contact at nbsbc.org and uh, register at events. We would love to see you. And until next time, have a lovely day and, and good luck with your GovCon. Take care. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Irene. See you at Vets24. Yes, yeah, see you in a few weeks. Thank you.